Hello and welcome back. Our day two, the five, day night two. It's night two. I can safely say night two. Our broadcast continues. I'm Jeff Gershman. We're joined by even more guests. We've got a hot duo from Enhanced Ooh. Games. Uh, Tessio Mizuguchi is here. Hello. Hey. It's tremendous to see you. Thanks so much for coming. Very good to see you yeah. again. Yeah. And yeah. Mark McDonald is here. Glad to be back. Glad to be back. Yeah. Number five. I checked the spreadsheet earlier. Oh, okay. All right. I'm the, yeah. I'm in the five timers club. All right. Exclusive so. club. Didn't realize that that spreadsheet was going to get so much traction and cause so much <laughs> drama behind the scenes. Oh, no. There Here was drama? Are. Oh, yeah. Oh, my. Oh. Well, there's always drama. Yeah. No, there's, we'll, we'll get into some of that drama tomorrow night, I'm sure. Right. And Brad Shoemaker joining us as well. Hello. So you're here showing the Tetris effect. We are here showing the Tetris effect. That's right. Yeah. Finally. Yeah, finally. 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 After many, many years. Yeah. In production, well, in pre-production and yeah. in thought process and whatever. When did the when did the idea for Tetris Effect hit? Uh, I got a the very basic inspiration in 2004. Mm. PSP when P PSP came out from Sony, and uh, I wanted to make a Tetris with music yeah. type of experience, but. Uh, um, yeah, it's for, for many reasons. Uh, it's not happened. It was not happened. So it's a, it's a tricky license, I'm sure. You know, making. Um, yeah, you know, Tetris Company had the license with, you know, give the license to EA. Right. Oh, right. At right. the right time. Yeah. So. But it's kind of a good thing. Yeah. Because. Yeah, we could make a luminous. <laughs> That's right. where luminous. Yeah, luminous might not exist. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, necessary is kind of the mother. Of it's it's hard to imagine. Well, it, it, it's hard to imagine the PSP without Luminous. Like yeah, that was, yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, I it was when you were out for GDC. I think was it was when, yeah. when Luminous sure. got announced for Switch. And you had played it like yeah, it was this, cosmically yeah, it was the like night I, before. I had pulled out my PSP and, yeah. and played Luminous like t a couple of days before that announcement, just on a whim. Yeah. And then it was like I, I was sitting thinking. It's about time for Luminous to come back, and here and then it happened. And everybody so. played it on the PSP, apparently. And mm. I know it came out for 360, right, as well. Yep. Yeah, yeah, Luminous for Xbox Live. Live, right? Yeah. But everybody, everybody Love. now with the remaster coming out, yeah, everyone is like, oh, I, that game never left my PSP. I, not one single person since we announced yeah. the remaster has been, I mean, it must have done okay on the 360, but everybody is like, yeah, they just associate it with the PSP. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely played it on the 360 and bought the, you know, the, the Genki Rocket skin and, and all that stuff. It was like a stuff. Christmas album, yeah, too, the, yeah, of yeah. like remix music I, for I went it, and I picked know. up all the, the, the stuff that got released uh, after the fact. But yeah. Yeah, it, it's, that, to me, that's always going to, be, or, or that, that's always going to be a PSP game. Mm. Right. Uh, yeah. and, and now with the Switch out, kind of, Seemingly, like, it kind of fills in the gap that Sony's handhelds did in some ways. Like, right. it seems like a really great platform for Luminous to appear. Yeah. yeah, that's the one that there's the most excitement around. Like, of course, it's coming out on on you know on PC as well. Yeah, uh, and the Xbox One and, and PS4. But um, but yeah, people, it's that option just to take it anywhere, right? Yeah. Like, and, I, and yeah, I think it really is the association with the PSP and people yeah, are like, I, I think the Switch is, is the new PSP. I'm not normally the person who really wants to play games on the Switch because I yeah. usually leave my Switch docked. So if, I, if at that point, Same with me. I might as well play it on PlayStation 4 or yeah. higher resolution or, or, or what have you. Mm -hmm. but there's something about the way my, my brain is structured in such a way yeah. that I need Luminous here. We're well, also wearing headphones. That's That was yeah. another big thing, right? I think that's something that Luminous... That's something that we get actually with Tetris Effect that's nice is so you can play it outside of VR, but when you are playing in a VR, a crazy, like 95% of people who play games in VR are probably playing them with headphones. Yeah. And so when we do stuff like Res or like Tetris Effect that really uses sound, mm. you can get away with more. I mean, you can put in a lot more subtleties where, you know, on the other end of the spectrum, there's a cell phone game where 99% of people aren't, don't have the sound on at all. Right, but here it's like no, they're actually wearing headphones, so they're going to hear all of the little like tones and things like that, um, you know, that sound effects when just you move pieces and things like that. They can catch a lot of the subtleties. So it mm -hmm. seems definitely like you can you can really get Im immersed in a game, you know, right. between the just the headphones and, and and the headset. That type of immersion seems like something that's just uniquely suited to the the types of games you've made over the years. Like how has it been? How exciting has it been for you to see virtual reality become 
something that you know people can just walk into a store and buy now? Um, to tell the truth, uh, uh, the reason I uh, you know, entered this industry, uh, I was I joined to Sega in 1990, and uh, that was uh, um, I wanted to make VR game. At in the time, 90, you know, yeah. Yeah, it's a 1990. Yeah, but you know, at the time, you know, uh, it's arcade game. Right. So and uh, I joined some very special hidden, you know, uh, secret project in Sega, and uh, I did the many uh, VR project uh, experiments. Mm. But um, can we show? Can we show a oh, picture yeah. on your phone? Yeah, 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 to yeah, these yeah. guys? Okay. <laughs> Later. Yeah, Later. Okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. So we anyway. can say what that picture is, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I yeah. did interrupt. We can talk about that yeah. in a second. Okay. Yeah, so I dreamed a long, long years. I dream, you know. I've been dreaming, oh, you know, uh, I want to create a VR experience. And uh, after Child of Eden, um, I felt, oh, I need to stop the creation. For a while, because um, I I was so frustrated with just you know square 2D right. TV yeah. screen. Yeah. So <laughs> and I I want to go to the, the next level, but um, you know you did I, some. Did you do some 3D with? Child yeah, yeah, I tried with the 3D, yeah, 3D TV, TV thing. But right. uh, yeah. And then you know what that being a, a connect game with the the hand yeah. stuff. Yeah. You know, that's it's a very different way of controlling a game. Mm -hmm. But how how did you feel about? That? It sounds like that wasn't enough. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you know, we we made a three D three D version, and uh, you know, they're wearing the three D glasses, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, playing like this. But you know, it's like a just window. Right. <laughs> the world over yeah. there. So right. separate. Yeah. So it's not immersive. So yeah. So going back to the to the earlier thing that we were talking about, so that was pre-virtuality, right? The arcade, right? That was pre that. Yeah. So at Sega, was that when you started? They already had the prototype. Yeah. Was, that was 1991 or two. Yeah. Uh, Sega bought some prototype from Bachalki. Oh, okay. Company. Yes. But they were going to make it for the Mega Drive, right? They were going to make a home oh, yeah, 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 yeah. of VR, yeah, which is hilarious now <laughs> to think about. Okay, I will show you. That in 1990, but one, so, two. Okay, so this is the prototype when he started at Sega. They had, was it two Game Gear screens? Yeah. It was two Game. It's Why? two Game Gear screens, <laughs> and you see this thing. It it looks yeah uh, really hilarious. Can we show it to the camera as well? Hmm? Can we show it to the to the camera too? Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Um, so this yeah. This is like an AR. Oh right. Yeah. 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 This is a half, you you're using a half mirror. Okay. So it is very much literally like duct tape together um, yeah. kind of thing. But um, but yeah, it's hilarious to me that that at the time they were using this and thinking like yeah, be, there's going to be a consumer product in the next like uh, two or three years. Well, it's mm -hmm. it's, it, it's they tested it. I, was it CES ninety. Three or, or right. Sega VR. They actually shown. had a yeah. Had there was a, a thing. prototype. I tried it. Yeah. Uh, oh God. And it was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> it was, you know, it, it, I'll frame a second. Like, basically, yeah. yeah. But you know, it was it was you know it was hooked up to to a Genesis to a Mega Drive. Right. And and, and you know the it was just the the software wasn't good. The tracking just made you feel ill. Yeah. Uh, you know, because I. I and it's been a long time, so I'm trying to like remember this demo I took when I was. 17, well, it was gonna. But it was gonna work with the activator, activator? too, right? And they, so it they was weren't showing it with the activator, but it was okay. like it, it was more just like, hey, put this on and play this, and there's like a missile defense or, or, okay, or some okay. kind of thing. But right. you know, it was Genesis level, 16-bit yeah. graphics, kind of in your face, and then the tracking. I, if I remember correctly, it didn't do any of I'm this sure, direction yeah. because I'm that's sure it had the hard that. part. Yeah. So it was just kind of head tilt tracking. I'm curious to, to, to actually to ask you guys while Ms. is looking for this about like how you're seeing VR lately. Like not just 
PlayStation VR, but kind of VR in general. I mean, you guys, you just st still do like a roundup every now and then. Yeah, and here and there. Yeah. Yeah. It's. Uh, do you find yourself playing it much personally at home? You know, these days, every now and then, or does it depend on when a hot title comes out, or how often are I you? Think, yeah, when it, when a game comes along, that definitely helps. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm checking out things at home, mostly for you know, are we going to cover? Stay it? up on stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or okay. And then also, I. Uh, <laughs> okay. Sorry. Sorry, I forgot about I can, the camera. I can hold this up to the. I forgot about the camera aspect of it as well. So um, I'm not sure how well that makes out. <laughs> wow. So yeah. this is my first project at <laughs> Sega. So you're, he's holding a camera there as well, right? Okay. Yeah. So he's holding like a web camera um, that is for the. Um, yeah, for that was the 19 for the AR style. You can see the two screens. <laughs> The two screens was like a speak and spell for some reason in the background, it looks like. Uh, yeah. More? Pretty good? Okay. Yeah, oh. that's, wow. Yeah, so that was what VR was. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, you know, I didn't buy a PlayStation VR until recently uh, because... Polybius. Uh, yes, yeah, two things. Killer app. It's Polybius, yeah. yeah, the killer app, Polybius. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I just have had a, a really bad time with the tracking. Yes, I uh, remember. Especially with like move controls and stuff. Yep. And, and, and you know, Did I the I, new I bought, one do better? The yeah. like the brighter. Okay, better. so you have yeah. the same the same issues. Same issues, but yeah. Polybius is you know you sit down and play it. It's not a it's not a move. You know, I'm not really doing that much moving. So right, right. It's very playable. Yep. Um, and Polybius is eventually going to come to PC, but I just couldn't wait anymore. Yeah. And I, I just. Polybius is amazing. Yeah. We we I, we talked about it when you guys played the game, but we. I took Polybius to the team and I'm like, you have to play this game, you have to check this game out. The reason being, just think, you know, that's something we're doing with Tetris Effect as well, is we're using the 3D of, of VR. We're not going so heavy into like, oh, it's room scale or there's no touch controls. We're not even using the, the move controllers. Right. Uh, it's all about the 3D effect and just like the like simple joys and like wonder you can have just of things like having a crazy really good fidelity like 3D coming at you and Polybius does it just with text like even the yeah. text when you finish a level or whatever I'm just like I can't wait for the the next level so that the text explodes and it's text in my that looks face. like it came off a of Commodore 64 exactly yeah yeah and uh, it's all you know programmer art or whatever and it's Amazing! It's glorious. Yeah. I love that's something that, that game. like a lot of the stuff that's out on PC <clears throat> VR right now. I this sounds. Uh, I, I, I don't mean to denigrate these games, but a lot of them come off as kind of like toys to me. Like they're just gimmicky, sort of physics-based. Right. Mm. Yeah, a lot of a lot of. I'm reminded of like the first cell phone games where it was like, right. oh hey, you have a, a gyro, what a gyrometer? What am I? Gyroscope. Sure? Gyroscope. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to use it. You know, I think not Monkey Ball. Monkey Ball is actually a good game that uses right. it, but there would be a game that that's that's it. That's the entertaining that's for the 10, ten minutes yeah. or something. But what what differentiates uh, those games from what you guys are doing? And I guess Polybius is kind of the same thing. Is that they're very simple games. You know, Polybius simple like tunnel shooter. Right. Tetris pretty simple game. Yep. Rez, pretty simple game. Yeah. But putting them in VR turns them into this like sensory, more like experiential sort of thing. Where it's not yeah. about like what goofy thing can you do with physics controllers, right. it's like take an existing game and like embrace yourself in it, you know. When I think part of it, at least for us, is like VR is is still really young, mm -hmm. right? And so, you know, we're not going to have like a God of War level VR experience out of the gate. I mean, we are in like Pong, literally like the Pong area, of, uh, Pong era of VR. Mm -hmm. And so to us, the things that are important are like that it feel really good, that you never get sick mm -hmm. whatsoever, um, and that you know you can anybody in the family, anybody can play the game and and feel okay with it. Now, I think as VR gets more mature, just like the game industry did, it's going to splinter off, and there's going to be all, every genre that exists now is going to exist in VR. But right now, I just I feel like you can't really do certain genres well in VR because. It has to be 120 frames a second. If you're making a PlayStation 4 game, that knocks down, you know, how much of the right. uh, uh, polygons and stuff you can be pushing. Um, and so that we're still trying to take advantage of the cool stuff, but not trying to be like, oh, we can make the same game that we would make in a non-VR game and just make it for VR, you know. So yeah. um, if you look at our games, I think that's been a thread through them. It's, and it mm -hmm. seems like you know there are definitely like parallels to be drawn to Luminous with Tetris Effect in terms of like you, you're progressing through 
uh, different visual styles and different music and, and, and even sound effects for moving the pieces and stuff, which mm -hmm. is just great. As some, as some of my favorite, I, I found myself playing Luminous, you know, on beat, rotating the yeah. blocks when I didn't have to because I just needed to keep exactly, you know, yeah. playing music, you know, with it. And that was something that was very striking when playing Tetris Effect is, is like that feeling of like, I, I don't need to rotate these blocks, but right. I need I'm to gonna rotate do. I'm going to go blocks. around one extra time just yeah. to... <laughs> Uh, yeah, and it's, you know, the same team and not just the, uh, like, the same team from original yeah. Illuminas. A lot of the same people mm. are on the team at, mm. at Monstars and at Resonair, the developers who did Area X, who did Res Infinite, now are doing Tetris Effect. Yeah. They're a lot of the same people, so it's just, that stuff is kind of in their DNA. Yeah. Um, and it comes out, but yeah, we hear that we hear that a bunch um, mm -hmm. with the parallels between. Yeah, so we are talking a lot, like you know, how can we make feel good mm -hmm. emotionally? Yeah, you know, not only physically, you know, physically and emotionally. So I think the power of the sound and the music, and you know, we can use that kind of a space. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, original Tetris is still fun. I think, you know, even if the black and white, right, Definitely. the game yeah. itself. But what is the change with the technology? So, yeah, we, all the time we talk about that, you know. So we want to make much more, anyway, you know, emotional movement type. So, and uh, we decided to um, generate a bunch of particles and, uh, you know, and uh, relate it with sound and the music. Yeah. So, you know, uh, the particles change the colors and the physics with the sound data triggers, mm -hmm. the MIDI and the wave file. And uh, so this is like, a, huh, how can I say? That's like chemistry. Yeah. 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 yeah I mean, we talk a lot about stuff fe feeling good. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I think a lot of games talk about like, uh, Engagement, like I know there was a quote from um, from Naughty Dog this week that I thought was interesting, where they're like, "It's not we don't make games for people to to have fun. It's that we want people to feel engaged." And I think yeah. what one thing that we talk about is we want people to actually like literally feel good. Like it it it, it sounds kind of cheesy, but we talk a lot about changing the sounds or the colors of things to just like literally feel good as you are playing it yeah, is yeah. like a big goal of it was a big goal with res and it's a big goal now mm. with tetris effect yeah um yeah it's a very ab abstract uh field mm -hmm. but you know it's really fun to make the story narrative um mm. process like a, a you know, progression with, yeah, a story yeah, yeah, yeah. progression through yeah. tetris yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Even in that demo, it starts out with like cool colors, you know, it's all green and blue and pretty placid and by, or maybe the order is random, I'm not sure in the demo, but at least at the end of my demo, yeah. the Tetris pieces were on fire by the end. That's right. And instead of a musical note, I was like, the, it was shouting at me every time I rotated a piece. Yeah. It's yeah. Strangely intense for Tetris. Yeah, yeah like the, the other thing we talk about with the game is, is kind of like an album. I mean, the music is a strong part of it, and so I don't think it's too much of a stretch to say, you know, if you're talking to somebody about an album, you can say like, oh yeah, this this song, this level, or this song is supposed to make you feel this way, or this song has this mood, or I felt this playing mm -hmm. that song. Well, and it sounds kind of silly saying that about a Tetris level, but that's kind of what we're after is right. like, yeah. yeah, you should feel this way playing this level, and then we want to take the mood over here with that level, and that's where what Miz is talking about, that it's abstract, but there's kind of a story to it the same way, mm. hopefully the same way as like a good album, that the one song leads into the next, and yeah. The reasons and meaning behind why this level leads into that level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if the lyrics, you know, give the big effect to you, so emotionally, right? Yeah. So, and then mechanically, I mean, you know, it, it, the the rules of Tetris still apply, but mm -hmm. this in the zone uh, mechanic. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a it's a surprisingly big change. Like mm. when I when I first saw it, I was like, okay, it's just like a, a stop time thing and, and right. give you a breather. But bullet time for Tetris. Sure. Stuff. Yeah. Oh, yes. Bullet no, time. No. Don't yeah. never say that. Yeah. Never. But, but actually, <laughs> we're not broadcasting. Yeah. No, this, let's so. turn these cameras off. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But but getting in there and seeing how in the zone worked made a lot more sense, and and it also cool. seems to it changes the way you think about 
the field, the, 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 right. the well. Like, like okay, well, I, I, these mistakes have been made, but actually I'm going to turn it around here now. Right, and, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so for, so for just to explain real quick, so the zone mechanic, what that is, is basically you fill a meter as you clear lines, right? And then you can activate it at any time. You can just leave it be. You never have to hit it. You can totally ignore it. In fact, some people have during the, <laughs> during the demos. We like, you know, take the headphones off. Like, uh, try, hitting, try hitting R2. You hit, hit R2 or F, L2, it effectively stops time. The pieces stop falling on their own. If you want, if you just need a breather, you can just take that time and, and you know, think about your next move or just move something over if you're getting near the top of the matrix. But what you, what, what actually good players and you were doing a lot of, Jeff, is also lines don't disappear when you clear them while you're in the zone. So uh, they just move to the bottom and you basically can store them up. And so you can store up more than four. You can store up eight, 12, 16. A, a dodecahexadris, I think is what that's <laughs> called when it's 16 or over lines. But, um, and then like, yeah, it explodes very Polybius style in your face uh, if you're playing in VR once you come out of it. But the, uh, the idea there being that while you're in the zone, because lines are getting knocked to the bottom, you don't have to worry about completing two or three or four lines, just complete lines, complete lines, as yeah. fast as you can, like throw that L piece upside down, do something you would never do just because it has that one block that's gonna complete the line, and then it's gonna knock the line out of the top and down to the bottom, yeah, which and ends you're gonna up be kind fine. of like, yeah, it ends up you know, preventing, like that would be a, a huge mistake right. if you we're playing regular yeah. Tetris, but You'd at that totally point, be screwed. It, it kind of just lets you just keep going. Exactly, uh, yeah. And, and so at first I was like, oh, the, in the zone's gonna be, yeah, like, like you said, it would be like, let's take a breather, right. get our bearings, but instead, it's this frenzy of like, I'm going to hit this and then just go for it. Right, uh, and, right. And that was not what I thought it was going to be. And it was a really cool feeling. And, and so, you're right, yeah, that, that stuff explodes. Right, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so hopefully it's something where, you know, beginner players use it for the former reason, that they're just like, oh, God, what am I going to do? Okay, I can actually look at the next piece, which I normally don't, you know, um, or maybe think about swapping in my hold piece or, like, you know, do some more strategy. And then as they get better, and then even just while you were playing during the demo, you know, we noticed that you were getting better in terms of how you thought about when you were going to activate it. Like you would, you know, save up some stuff. You'd have a nice piece in storage. You'd wait till a good piece came and then hit it. Get all that stuff out of the way and then just go as fast as you could through the rest of it. Um, so hopefully there's like some depth to it and like some, some room for people to grow like playing Tetris. But... Um, but again, one of the things that we really wanted to do is not mess with the formula who didn't want the formula messed with. So Well, I, I imagine that like the, the Tetris company at some point is only gonna let you do so much with the formula, right? They've they've got their rules. They do, yeah. It's interesting. Like we we thought that going in, but they haven't said no to anything so far yet. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I will say they did have feedback about how the Tetraminos look in some level. We had some like really round tetraminos that weren't really connecting to each other so you couldn't tell what a z block was or oh. like made out of snowflakes i mean it was it was actually good feedback and it was yeah. stuff that it was definitely something that we should have changed but it was not like a you know that's not a tetris block like you have to do it this way it was just like hey you can't really tell that that is a z piece against a white background like that kind of feedback oh, sure. um, and we have other crazy stuff uh, mm -hmm. We have other modes yet mm -hmm. to talk about um, that we'll talk about like later in the summer, closer to launch and stuff. But um, with those modes as well, without saying anything, we were kind of you know walking on eggshells, tiptoeing to the Tetris company, like, ah, is this gonna be okay? <laughs> I mean, even even calling something like an Octoris, you know, we were like, yeah, is, yeah, is yeah. that gonna? They're gonna want us to call it like Super Double Tetris. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. But. Um, but they're like, no, this is great. Keep going. And like, they are really, really specific about controls, though. Like, mm. the controls in that game are way better for it. But they are like down to the literal like tenth of a second. Like, how long you spin things, how long things can stay on top before you know while you can keep spinning them right. until they lock in. A ton of like crazy rules that I can't even uh, understand. Like mm. a lot of math. <laughs> to how like the Tetris game where you think about and we did because we made a prototype on our own you think like how hard could it be to make Tetris one thing spins it that way you spin it that way but there's a ton of subtlety it's it's like a it's like a maybe not as much as a fighting game but like a, a beat em up or anything like that where that it feels the difference between it feeling right or like Super Meat yeah. Boy or something like that a jump in like a, a platformer game right. 
the difference between it feeling right and it feeling just really amazing, perfect on is like fractions of seconds. Can I ask a quick personal question? As people who are now making a Tetris game, do you guys spin in both directions? I <laughs> still don't. Miz, do you? I still spin uh, in one direction. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that, that is a huge barrier, mental barrier, though, yeah. that you have to get through to be any good because every time you screw it up, you have to hit it right. three more times. Right. To, yeah. Like, a lot of people don't even know that you can spin both directions. Right. Like, I've had that mind-blown moment with a lot of people saying, like, oh, yeah, one is clockwise, one is counterclockwise. They're like, you can spin two different, two different <laughs> ways? Like, what does that even and mean? And I feel like I've played some really bad bootleg Tetris things mm. that only allowed you to spin one way. Right, on right. Like, oh, we only put one button on this thing, because who needs two buttons? Yeah. yeah and they didn't even know, yeah, they probably didn't even notice themselves. That right. Two. Uh, yeah. yeah. So... Are you mostly just kind of in the Sony area showing the game the entire show? We're or? in the Sony area, yeah, showing the game. So they have it. So again, it's it's not VR only, but they only have it on the show floor in the VR. They call it like the VR stack. Okay. Because there's like two levels of a, of a bunch of VR kiosks. So they have it there. Um, we're showing it in the media area, mm. the like the behind closed doors media area mm. um, throughout the show. Um, we are hoping to do a public demo. Um, it'll probably have to be a time-limited thing, mm -hmm. but um, we want to get people to try it for themselves. We also have a few other things that we kind of want to show people before we launch, but that'll probably be like late summer, early fall. So the game comes out in the fall. We'll probably want to time that like as close as possible to the, to the actual launch. And, and what's the reaction been, both from the people playing it and, and, and what's it been like watching people outside the company play the game? Does it feel... Like it, it's validating the ideas you had, or are you making a lot of notes and going like, okay, we, we need to go back and here's some things we need to change? Yeah, we have uh, still, uh, you know, doing a memo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's some notes. You know, hot. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so, you know, the reaction from the people is very, very important, mm. you know. Um, but mostly, in Tetris Effect, is really good positive reaction from everybody. Yeah, it's been right. great. Yeah. Like the trailer, even, the trailer especially. Yeah, trailer, the action yeah. of trailer is amazing. We couldn't be happier with Yeah, uh, reaction about, you yeah. know, what is this music? It's a great song. Yeah, yeah. Right, so, yeah. yeah. And, and, and is that all being, that's all being done in-house? It's all being done in-house, yeah. 100%, yes. Yeah, there's so much tuning that has to go on yeah. with that. Yeah, music is one of the part of the tuning. Yeah, so it's very very important. Yeah. Right? So, and uh, we decided, okay, let's make a all music sound of the music, you know, in house. Right. Cool. And then also we don't have to worry about like with Res, licensing and doing all that kind of stuff. Even with yeah. Luminez, right? Like it's a uh, shining. Yeah. yeah shining. Like there's yeah. that there's all these hoops to jump through, which is fine. Like we do it for those games, but like with this game, it was like that. Oh, that's a big bonus. That's another nice thing that we have to do. Right. With an outside person, like we change the, you know, the sound effects with when you move pieces on the first level alone, it probably changed, you know, 12, 15 times or something like that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, and the songs themselves if change. You had to, like work with an outside person, you know, yeah. it's like, okay, they're going to get back to me tomorrow. Or, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 And, yeah. and people get more frustrated, I think, <laughs> when they're outside and you change something yeah. 12 or 15 times. Um, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so that's been like having them also, and then when it comes time to do the trailer, it's like, hey, we need a minute or two minute, 40 second version of this thing and, uh, and whatever, and it's just so much nicer to do that. But yeah, the reaction has been like, it's a lot, I feel like a lot like Res Area X, where people come mm. out of it and they're just kind of like, some people don't say much, some people just like are smiling, like, but people, <laughs> like you can read it in their faces that they're like responding to it. And, right. Also, even at the show, you know, which I think would, of course, skew, especially in the media area, towards the hardcore people. But you, you get a lot of people, even in the media, who haven't played a Tetris game in a while. Like, I haven't played a Tetris game. I played Puyo Puyo Tetris, which is a great game. Yeah. But I, before that, and I played that a little bit, but before that, I hadn't played a game in a long time. But even here at E3, there's a lot of people like, oh, I'm a huge Tetris fan. It's like, oh, really? what was the last Tetris game you played? Oh, I, uh, the Tetris, you know, DS or something like that. Right. And it's like, yeah. oh, yeah. And I, I could say the same thing myself. Yeah. Like, uh, that's totally true. And so it's been cool to see people who, like, consider, consider themselves fans but haven't played a, a game in a long time actually, like, try it and be kind of like, oh, yeah, okay, like, I, I, I get it. Like, it, that, that feels really good, yeah. Mm. 
So with you know with, with Res and, and now Tetris Effect, it really seems like VR has been a very inspiring thing for you. Do you feel just full of? Do you have like? 20 different games you want to eventually make in VR, or are you, are you the type of person that just focuses on this and then gets the, to the next idea later? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> that's a question, that's a you question. Oh, that's a yeah. question. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, <clears throat> yes. <laughs> the answer yes. is yes. Yes. Great. Yes. I mean, I will say, I will say that, so Ms. talks about different ideas. Uh, and almost always there is a VR aspect to it. It's not necessarily that it would have to be only in VR, mm -hmm. but it, there are ideas where it's like, and this would be really cool when you're doing this or feeling like it's usually they're described in, in VR terms, but I think some of the other stuff that you've been talking about recently as things that you're interested in, are like social, mm -hmm. social VR, multiplayer VR in a yeah. VR space, like what that could mean and what would be interesting about that. And, um, you know, as the headsets get cheaper and easier and... Um, yeah, he's getting the AR, MR mixing yeah. in yeah. the future. Yeah. The thing that surprised me that I, you know, I didn't think would be a big deal for me because I am very lazy, uh, was I, I found myself drawn to exercise VR, you know, mm. the, the games that could serve as a, as something of a workout. Beat Saber, or what are you? Uh, Beat, Beat Saber, I, once they, I, I think their mod tools are out now. I, I think I need more music for Beat uh, Saber to work. So yeah. there's a game that's very similar called Soundboxing. Right, uh, right, right. I've been playing uh, a lot of that, and it just works off YouTube videos, so people can create their own. Right, which is brilliant, yeah, by the way. Yeah, yeah. it's just, uh, it's great because then they just have this repository linked to these videos. You don't have to go download it or match it to an MP3. Right, right. And I, you know, I haven't been doing it as often as I should, but that feeling of like this is actually this feels like a valuable workout tool also. Yeah. And it's something that I think everyone thought like, oh, maybe VR could be used for this as well, but actually putting it into practice. Uh, was was interesting. It, mm. it, it gave the whole thing a, a little more depth for me. Where yeah, there are things that are just like here's tremendous experiences, uh, and then on the other end, it's like yeah, you talk about a lot of the toys, and then in between, a lot of shooting galleries. You know, right, a lot right. of a lot of just like here's another game that will let you load a gun the right way. Sure. And, you know. Yeah. And and those sorts of things, and there's a place for that. But right, right, right. Uh, absolutely, absolutely is. I mean, you know, and that's another thing we talk about with the with the Tetris effect. Like, I I do love some of those games. Like Resident Evil Seven, to me, right, yeah. I think is an exception to what I was talking about earlier. Like Resident Evil Seven to me felt like, I can't believe this game is in VR. Like this is a like, triple A, high production value full, long-ass game that is all in VR. It felt like something had fallen from like three years in the future, a VR, a VR game that I was playing it, like completely blew me away, but there's not much else like that, like uh, right. around it, right? Yeah. Um, so, but I, I, I love those types of experiences where you're getting in there and you're getting, you know, sweaty or you're nervous or they're horror or they're scary or whatever. Um, what we, but with Tetris Effect, we're going the exact yeah, other way with way. things, where it's oh. like, yeah, we talked about this again when you guys visited, but it was like, we want this to be the game where when you come home and you think you're too tired for any game, or if you're playing in VR, you're definitely too tired to play something in VR, uh, that this is the game you you do play because you're going to be more relaxed after than when you actually start. It, it almost seems meditative. Exactly, yeah. yeah that's yeah. actually a, another key word that we used a lot. We called it Zen Tetris for a while yeah. was, the, was like the code name because if it, the game works right, you should be completely out of your head. I mean, that's why we called it Tetris Effect. We want people to put just like get out of themselves, get out of their head, forget whatever's going on for like 15, 30 minutes at a time. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so hopefully, like the music and all the stuff adds to that. But Tetris already kind of has a little bit of that kernel in it already, where you really can focus and, and kind of forget what's going on. Mm. But. Yeah, we already used the code name Trip. That's uh. right. <laughs> Trip was our has been our code name for like the last like two or three yep. years. For yeah. no, why we chose it because it started with T. There's no other reason to it. Just <laughs> yeah. No, just, no other meaning behind sense. it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> started with a T. Tetris. It's, it's easy to remember <laughs> that way. That's all. Right.
<laughs> well, thank you so much for coming. Thank, thank you. you for having it's us. It's great to talk to you again. Uh, I'm looking forward to playing more of it. Awesome. It, it really stands out. Uh, I had a great time with it. Awesome. Thank you, thank you guys cool. so much. Thank All you right. very much. Thank you. Thanks. We'll be back. We're going to take another break, get some more guests through here. Stay tuned.